morning. Welcome to Weekly Momentum. It's a video blog brought to you by Momentum Ministries to help put a little momentum into your week. I'm Scott Wade and I thank you for joining us for today's Weekly Momentum. We are currently in a series of video blogs, um, Four Robes of the Saints. And I'm going to follow you around and give you some more wardrobe advice. And I'm going to help you with the progression of your wardrobe on your journey to heaven. Our theme verse for these messages has been uh, Revelation 7, 14. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The uh, people coming out of the great tribulation, that's a question you might, well, what does that mean? That the, the, uh, John the Revelator was at the, uh, before the throne of God and he saw this great multitude of people who had come out of the great revelation. Well, what's the great revelation? Well, the great revelation is, or the great tribulation, I should say, it, it is the tribulation that encompasses all of history and all of humanity. There was a great number, a multitude that no one could number. But now they have uh, washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They're in heaven and their journey is over. Their wardrobe progression is complete. They've renewed their wardrobes all along the way until this great moment in heaven. Uh, so far in this uh, uh, video blog series, we have seen the, uh, the wardrobe of the saints progress from filthy rags to the robes of Christ's righteousness. And today I want us to consider the next phase of our wardrobe, and that's the righteous deeds of the saints. We read about that in the book of Revelation as well, in Revelation 19, uh, beginning with verse six. Uh, John said, I heard a voice, or I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude. Once again, there's that great multitude. Like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord, our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give Him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. The fine linen, these robes that she clothed herself with, is the righteous deeds of the saints. You see, Jesus doesn't save us to dress us up and put us on a, a pretty, uh, pretty shelf or to be a display. He puts us in work clothes. I remember uh, years ago in my first church, I, uh, that's back in the day when we wore a tie, uh, every day into the office and we wore a suit on Sundays for preaching. Uh, we don't dress quite like that as formally anymore. But one day I went to the office at, uh, at my church there in Kings Mountain. And uh, at that time we were working on uh, building a fellowship hall uh, right next to the church. And I remember a couple guys came by and they were going to do some work on the fellowship hall and they knocked on the door and I let them in, had to unlock the door and and let them in, and uh, uh, they looked at me with my uh, my uh, dress pants on and my shirt on and my tie, and they said, those aren't work clothes. I said, well, wait, yes, they are. They're my work clothes. Y you see, I was dressed to do the work that God wanted me to do that day, and they were in, in uh, blue jeans and uh, flannel shirts, and they were going to do some physical labor on the fellowship hall. Uh, but uh, the point of it is that uh, God gives us work to do, and we need to be wearing uh, the appropriate clothing for that. And, um, and the work clothes that we have really are to do the righteous deeds of the saints. Uh, Paul wrote to the Ephesians. He said, by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It's the gift of God. It's a, not a result of works so that no one may boast. So we're not saved by works. But then he goes on to say, this is how we're dressed. He says, we're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You see, the good works are the clothing that we wear. Consider what Jesus says in, uh, in Luke chapter 12. He said, stay dressed for action, keep your lamps burning, and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home so that they may open the door to him when he comes and knocks. Stay dressed. Keep on working. Be like men who are waiting for their master to come. Blessed are those, he says, those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, 
He will dress himself for service and have them come and recline at table. And he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or the third watch and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. We see from these passages that in order to be ready when Jesus comes, in order to be properly dressed when Jesus comes, we must be doing the work. The work is our clothing. But then, then the scripture says, Jesus will dress himself to serve us. That's going to lead us to the final garment in our our wardrobe that we've been renewing week by week, which we'll talk about next week. But for today, I just want you to consider this. Ask yourself, have I changed out of the filthy rags of my sin into the robes of Christ's righteousness? And if I have, am I now working for the master? Am I robing myself, clothing myself with deeds of righteousness that, uh, that are my, uh, my work for Jesus? And then I would say one more, or ask one more question. Is Jesus calling you to fulfill a particular work of service? And if so, are you doing it? Uh, he, um, I spoke uh, several weeks ago with, um, on, on the podcast, um, Casual Conversations. Uh, I spoke with a, a pastor from Midland Valley Church, the Nazarene, um, uh, David Gallimore. And David reminded us about how we are called uh, into the work of God, and that we then can answer that call. And uh, he reminded us that Isaiah's response was, here I am, send me. But then he said something that I thought was very interesting. When we respond, here I am, God responds to us, here I am. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that um, we can clothe ourselves with the righteous deeds of the saints, that we can be dressed and ready for service. We can be working when the master returns. Help us to do that, Lord, I pray. Help us to know that you are right there with us and we don't work on our own. You give us strength, you give us guidance, you encourage us, and you empower us to do what we otherwise could not do. So help us to be faithful to the work you call us to. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, God bless you. Thank you for joining me on Weekly Momentum. I hope this does put a little momentum in your week and, and that uh, you'll share it with somebody. And visit Momentum Ministries website at momentumministries.org. Find out more ways to, uh, to add spiritual momentum to your life. Uh, we have some revivals booked and, and coming up uh, early this spring, and, and I have some open dates if uh, if somebody out there wants to call me for a revival, I'm working on book number five in the Climb series, and that'll be out soon. And I already mentioned my podcast, Casual Conversations by Momentum Ministries, and, and that you can go on the website to receive that, and you can sign up for a daily momentum. And also, while you're on the website, if you wish to, uh, to give to support our ministry, you can do that by clicking on the donate button. And as I said, please, please pray for us. God bless you. Have a great week filled with spiritual momentum.